Hi, I'm Zach Galligan, and you are watching Where It Was Made. Oh, hello, and welcome to another episode of Where It Was Made. I'm your host, Ryan Coltrera. Well, the holidays are here again, and with them come Santa Claus, presents, and furry little creatures you can't feed after midnight for fear of them turning into scaly monsters. I'm talking, of course, about gremlins, a seasonal favorite of mine. On this episode of Where It Was Made, I'm going to take you back to Kingston Falls and show you how the locations from this 80s classic look today. Oh, must be carolers. Gremlins takes place in the snowy town of Kingston Falls, but the film was actually shot in sunny Los Angeles, California. Most of the movie was shot here on the famous Warner Brothers backlot in Burbank, California, with the interiors shot inside of various sound stages. It is widely regarded, along with Temple of Doom, as being the film that led to the creation of the PG-13 rating. Let's start our locations tour where the movie began. And I have a story to tell. Yeah, I know, who hadn't got a story? Well, nobody's got a story like this one. Nobody. Here we see the city street that doubled for Chinatown in the movie. This area is called Hennessy Street, and it is the same spot where Spider-Man has his famous upside-down kiss with MJ in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. What's down here? This is it. This is your grandfather's store? Yeah. Come on. No wonder you gotta drag people in off the street. Down these stairs is the shop where Mr. Peltzer first finds Gizmo the Mogwai and buys him for Billy. The name Mogwai was chosen because in Cantonese Chinese, Mogwai means devil, demon, or appropriately, gremlin. There is no actual shop inside this building, only storage for studio props and flats. Where's that coming from? What is that? Mogwai. I'm sorry. Mogwai, not for sale. Look, mister, there's three rules you've got to follow. Keep him out of the light. He hates bright light, especially sunlight. It'll kill him. And keep him away from water. Don't get him wet. But the most important rule, the rule you can never forget, no matter how much he cries, no matter how much he begs, never, never feed him after midnight. Next, let's hop across town to another studio backlot, this one being Universal Studios. It's here where we find Billy's house, and where we'll be returning later for another key location from this movie. It's in the Peltzer home, where Billy first receives Gizmo. Gizmo was originally intended to be the gremlin that turns into the evil stripe, but producer Steven Spielberg suggested that they let him remain the cute hero so that the audience and Billy could relate to him throughout the film. Good call. The exterior of the home was shot on Colonial Street at Universal Studios. The street pulled duty for eight years, as was Styria Lane on the show Desperate Housewives, but we know it as Billy's snowy neighborhood. The fake snow in the film, since it was Los Angeles after all, was anywhere from potato flakes coming from the sky to shredded vinyl and foam for the ground snow. The interior of Billy's house, of course, was a soundstage. When the studio viewed the first cut of the movie, they told Joe Dante and producer Steven Spielberg that there were too many gremlins in the film. Spielberg responded by sarcastically recommending that they cut all the gremlins out and just call the movie People. The coloring of Gizmo's fur, including the white patch around the right eye, was directly modeled after one of Steven Spielberg's dogs. The neighboring houses on Colonial Street include the Delta House from Animal House, the Leave it to Beaver House, and the House from the Munsters. Let's head back over to the Warner Brothers lot. Here we see the church, where the gremlin hides inside a mailbox, spits the mail back at the priest, and then attacks poor Anderson. The church can be seen in a wide range of projects, from the Waltons to Gilmore Girls. As a matter of fact, there was a crew shooting a movie there as we were filming this episode, so it remains popular to this day. The fictional town of Kingston Falls was presumably near New York City, as Rand Peltzer goes to New York in the film. However, Screenwriter Chris Columbus has since clarified that it is meant to be in Pennsylvania. Across the street from the church, we find the home of the most hated woman in town. Digger, 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 digger. 
Here we see the old curmudgeon herself, living alone with her cats, which, as you may notice, are named after currency. Kopeck, dollar bill, etc. Early in production, Tim Burton was considered to direct this movie. Spielberg decided against it, however, because at the time, Burton had not yet directed a feature-length movie. Mrs. Deagle was based on the character of Ebenezer Scrooge, but instead of meeting three ghosts and redemption, she meets the gremlins. I warned you, Brad! The idea for these creatures came from screenwriter Chris Columbus during his time at NYU, when a horde of mice would invade the campus by night, causing all kinds of interesting noises. Joe Dante always wanted the gremlins to be played by puppets. As a compromise, the studio suggested a spider monkey in a suit, which was tested in Joe Dante's office. The animal went crazy, tearing the office apart and defecating everywhere. So Dante screamed at a trainer to get the animal, and then asked the studio, Puppets? And lastly, let's return to Universal Studios to check out the most recognizable location from this film, the main streets of Kingston Falls. All of the stuff that we shot in town was in the Back to the Future Street, as right. they now call it. They called it the Gremlin Street for a year, and then it was the Back to the Future Street. Damn you, Michael J. Fox. <laughs> As Zach Galligan pointed out, you may also recognize this as the clock tower square of Hill Valley in Back to the Future. In fact, here's the famous clock tower itself. Another connection to Back to the Future is that Frances Lee McCain, who played Billy's mother in this movie, also played Lorraine's mother, Stella, in Back to the Future, when Marty goes back to 1955. The area has also been heavily featured in To Kill a Mockingbird, Weird Science, and Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Here's the building that can be seen as the arcade in the background. This area of Kingston Falls, of course, is where the gremlins roam free and cause all kinds of hell in the third act of the film. At one point, stop motion was to be used for most of the gremlin action. Instead, they went with animatronics, each costing between thirty dollars to $40,000 each. When everyone left the lot for the day, security would have everyone open the trunks of their cars to make sure that no puppets were stolen. On the spot where Billy worked, there is now a gas station instead of a bank. The original building was also used as the coffee shop in Back to the Future. In a deleted scene from the film, we find out that Judge Reinhold's character of Gerald is actually hiding in a bank vault here as everything goes down in Kingston Falls. The tailor shop you see here doubled for the bar in the movie where Phoebe Cates is forced to tend bar for the gremlins. At least one of her screams during the scene was real, as the set was infested with roaches that kept crawling across the bar during takes. The gremlin shooting at Kate misses and hits a World War II photo of a B-17, a nod to the fact that the term gremlin actually began as RAF slang during World War II. Earlier in the film, Billy is seen in this bar showing his work to one Mr. Jones. The role was played by legendary animator Chuck Jones of Looney Tunes and the Grinch fame. The movie theater scene in the film no longer stands as it burnt down right after the filming of Back to the Future Part 2. The explosion of the theater was described by Phoebe Cates as deafening. She said the heat was so intense that it singed her eyebrows. It blew the doors off the theater and shattered windows up to a mile away from Universal Studios. Next to where the theater stood, we can still spot a few buildings that were converted into the department store, where Billy has his final face-off against Stripe. That's a real chainsaw blade Is in the, ch the entire time. So I have the baseball bat, and they locked it into place. The guy comes up to me, the special effects guy, I won't name him. <laughs> One of the special effects guys comes up to me yeah. and goes like this. So here's the thing, you gotta hold the bat like this, right there. Don't go like this, and don't go like that. Keep it right in the center, because it might jump a little bit if it hits a knot in the bat. I go, what if I go like this? He goes, well, you probably lose a finger, so I wouldn't do it. Oh. He's, um, and they go, okay, let's do this. Action. <laughs> That's 80s filmmaking. Yeah, there you go. But of course, the evil gremlins are defeated, and so we leave Kingston Falls. So that'll do it for this episode of Where It Was Made. Until next time, happy holidays, and I'll see you at the movies. So if your air conditioner goes on the fritz, or your washing machine blows up, or your video recorder conks out, before you call the repairman, turn on all the lights, 
Check all the closets and cupboards. Look under all the beds. Because you never can tell. There just might be a gremlin in your house.